Are there any questions or are there any uh, points that you would like to raise? Uh, So, if uh, not, thank you very much for this uh, presentation. Does anybody have any comments? Or any you can go with the discussion. Yes. You gave the demonstration. Yeah. Not in the 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 economic development rising from zero to hundred in two years, like a thing like that. Um, it would be amazing, but uh, if you look at the properties of another thing park, and you look at the properties that make the definition, the type of the definition of a clear of another thing park, you are on the right way. So selecting iconic parts of your heritage, which is Byzantium, and uh, an iconic part of your manufacturing, which is the mosaic, and you put it at the universal value, as the UNESCO does. So uh, UNESCO did very well uh, in the very beginning, but now no one knows if it is good or bad, what UNESCO is doing. Uh, sometimes it is unresponsible and is building up strategies that, as one of the speakers were saying, I think was or something. So starting the preservation is the first step for the dismantling of the monuments or something. Because how many people can monuments span? The Acropolis knows. Uh, the uh, Lincoln Tower in Pisa knows. If you look at the staircase, you have, to you have to How many people can monuments span? Uh, the big example is the Imperial Palace in uh, Beijing. Uh, it started as a public propaganda monument. Each child should go there. Each Muslim should go to the Mecca. Each Chinese should, should go to the Imperial Palace. But after that, they understood that the people that they started to, to go there were too many. So how to lower the number of the people? Of course, they didn't like the idea, the capitalist idea, rising the price of the tickets, you know, from 10 to 100, and you select. And instead of having 1,000 people paying $1, you have 1,000 people paying $1,000. But of course, in China, they don't react in this way. So this, this, the selection that they wanted to make is meritocratic. What does it mean? Nobody knows that. But the big part is how many people can a monument stand? And the second point is, uh, how do we select what we want to highlight? What does universal value mean? Universal value is something very political. It means that I tell you how to behave at home, in your house, how to raise your children, according to which values you should behave or not behave. So it is the universal value. Who decided it is universal? Years ago, it was religion. At least it was God. But now, who is God? Well, that's the idea of universal value according to UNESCO. <laughs> 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 the idea of universal value according to UNESCO is based on the story of the ground, the description, the justification uh, according to the criteria, meaning uh, um, specific um, expression of. Uh, um, mankind and the tra old craftsmanship in a certain period of history. So uh, we're not talking about uh, universal values based by politician or a, or a religion or a goodness. Yes. We are talking about uh, man production of man ability, which comes from the past, but, but which are part nowadays of our lives. 
soon after the inscription of the monuments of Slovenia inside the UNESCO World Heritage List, uh, we started um, a survey asking people in Slovenia if they knew which were the monuments inserted in, into the, the list. No, we had eight of them. And at the beginning, everybody knew about San Paolo de Cecilia, which is the most famous one, but uh, few of them knew about uh, the Archbishop Chapel, because the Archb Archbishop Chapel is a very little place inside a huge monument, which is not always so um, attended. A few years later, we made the same survey, and everybody in Lavena knew about the name of the UNESCO monuments. Um, I will say that we have to be proud of our heritage, and being proud means that we have to know our heritage. We have to know the people who comes from. Uh, when I say we, I mean the municipality, the people living in the city. Because you may receive tourism only if you may share the value, the identity of your city, your territory as a destination. Normal people want to come uh, to share, they want to, to become tourists because they want to share an experience. Uh, the city of Ravenna is, is also on the Atlantic Sea, as I, tell, as I told you. Um, we have many beach resorts on the right on the beach, and we open these resorts at night. Because people living in Ravenna did that, and people coming outside from Ravenna want to, to do that. So we are the uh, custodians of this UNESCO World Heritage List, but we have to share them with other persons. But while we are sharing them, of course we have to preserve them, but we have also to um, disseminate the knowledge about what they were, what they meant when they were built. We may also say, okay, this is the baptism of Christ. It's very difficult to explain the baptism of Christ to a Chinese but you may, see only, you may also say, look, it's so beautiful because of the colors, because of the, 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 the harmony of the architecture. It has a religious meaning. If you want, you may explain to you the religious meaning too. But the beauty is universal. Actually, I'd like to say something about who regulates the regulate. Is my question. Question is, when you decide about the Bible and about public interest at the global level, and when you speak about religious, because we speak about the free market and we speak about who regulates the free market. And this is the value, or is the value of culture, the value of money, and I think it's the banks, the central banks regulate the value of the money at the global level at the moment. And this is the situation. And the thing is, for me, I have done a book about the dynamics of regulation of global control and local resistance. And I was actually trying to put there who regulates the regulation. How can develop a global regulatory body? In 1998, when I was writing about global regulation and all this stuff, everybody was very uh, phobic about regulation. But nobody, but now everybody thinks about regulation. Regulation is very important thing. But the thing is, there, at the global level, at the moment, is who regulates the regulators. How can you regulate? And this is the problem we have at the moment. With digital currency, with digital, because the digital currency is going to be global. And this is another issue over there. And that as well, the, the culture is going to be global because it can be digitalized. And this is, can be transparent. And there, actually, whose interests are going to be served? That's my question. Who regulates the regulators? Okay. The 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 opportunity provides uh, on the other side for everyone to, to provide uh, to 
keys of our society in some violence and trying to see how this system is going to be enhancing its own violence it can become competitive and can maintain its dynamics. Thank you very much for all. We have a great report. And see, quarter past three. Three quarters of an hour. Yes. Thank you very much.